morning welcome back to the channel um today i'm doing first part of the sims 2 the gods family across the sims series so if you didn't check out the first video please go ahead i'll link to the end at the end here but i am starting with the iconic goth family and playing them through the sims 1 2 and 4. Um, i don't really have a preference for the sims 3 and i don't have the sims 3 installed on this laptop so i'm be skipping that in this series um, so as you see the sims neighborhood they actually live in pleasant view it's a little bit different from the sims 1 where they live in neighborhood 1. so the god's family cassandra's ready to start a family of her own but can she tame the town's casanova and Lord, um, will Mortimer bounce back after the disappearance of his wife, Bella? So in The Sims 2, Bella is not in the household. As you see, we have Cassandra, Alexander, and Mortimer is now an elder. It's a new life stage for this Sims 2 game. And so we're going to pop right in there and play as the game kind of already has a setup to do. So, if, spoiler alert, if you've never played The Sims 2, Cassandra Goth is now an adult. She is, I guess, the woman of the house since Bella has disappeared. The events of The Sims 2 takes place about 25 years after The Sims 1, which I guess put Cassandra maybe her early 30s. Depending on how that is, so as you see here, Cassandra is already at her home. She lives with her dad and her brother and her boyfriend, fiance, I guess. She's engaged to Don Lothario, who's the town's Casanova, um, is here too. So this is how they already start off. They live together. So the game is encouraging us, or I'm sorry, they're hanging out together. And then, of course, Mortimer in his advanced age. He's about a third of the way through the elder stage, according to the, the bar here. And then Alexander is almost to the top of his child guard. So they're pretty close. They're very affectionate. Mortimer's kind of taking over Bella's role. Um, in The Sims 1, Mortimer just worked. Um, and again, I'll link the video that I did earlier in, at the end of this video, so you can see what I'm mm -hmm, talking about. Mm -hmm. But Mortimer was more of a working fellow, which would have been more appropriate for maybe an old-timey feel. He works, and then Bella took care of the house and the kids. Oh, he's getting a call from Dina. Ooh. So in this one, he's dating Dina Caliente. She's the blonde of the Caliente sisters, which, again, spoiler, if you haven't played The Sims 2, Dina's also dating Don Lothario. I fast forward to the evening. I'm going to let the game play as it wants. So, Cassandra had a wish to get married to Don, which makes sense since they were already engaged. So they had a private wedding in the backyard. Just the uh, two of them, and then Mortimer and Alexander, of course, because they also live there. Santa's in for a rude awakening. Um, it's hard to know exactly what Don's going to do. So I wanted to try to play based on their wants and avoiding their fears. Because The Sims 2 had a really good wants uh, and dislike system. So if you see the icon above their head, it's actually triggering a memory for them. So they're having a memory that they married a rich Sim. Um, so I think Don brought money into the relationship, and of course God's already had money. So as you see in the memory here, she remembers us getting married to the Sim. So they've been engaged for some time, it looks like maybe two or three memories back. And they also seem to have a pretty good relationship um, between the two of them. They look like they have fun, they have a good time. And of course, she's had some bad memories too, like her grandmother passing, but there's no memory for anyone in the Goth family regarding Bella. Um, part of the lore that she just kind of disappeared and it reappears in screen. I believe the other town. In the Sims 2 that she kind of pops into, but she has no memory of her family. So after having a beautiful wedding ceremony and enjoying, you know, marital bliss, it's time for them to retire to their bedroom. Um, I did let Cassandra go ahead and take over the master bedroom, and since she's now married versus staying in the smaller room, it's kind of mutually themed. I don't want to try for baby just yet, because neither one of them has received a wound for that, or a wand for that. Now what I did like also about The Sims 2 is that there's cutscenes, so certain events in the game will trigger a cutscene, so getting married, um, schooling, going to college, all seem to trigger cutscenes. They're about 10 seconds long, maybe. They're kind of cute. You can always disable those in settings. 
I also like in The Sims 2 you can cuddle with your partner in bed while they're sleeping. So after having a wonderful night, Don kind of wakes up. He's ready to eat. He's ready to cook. Um, he's you know gone through the whole obligatory "I want to be married" status. Cassandra's just all about Don. She wants to you know talk to him and play with him and interact with him, and he's more about trips and kissing and and getting away. So he's not really as, as concerned about being married as she is. He's the romance aspiration. Where she's a family aspiration. So aspiration acts a little bit differently in The Sims 2. There's only, I want to say, six to eight of them. Um, and they kind of, along with personality, affect the wants and fears. So as you see, Don ate outside. Um, didn't try to eat inside with Cassandra. For some reason, maybe he just wanted some fresh air. Um, and then I'm going to wake and get Alexander moving because it's a regular day. So in The Sims... One, there was no difference between weekdays and weekends. In the sense, two, there is. Now we have a regular work schedule, and you usually go to work or school five days a week, and you have one or two days off, depending on what the job is. So, with Don, he gets to enjoy his life. Now, his one of his wants, which I locked, you can actually lock so they don't refresh, is to make out with three people. Since he already made out with Cassandra and there's a memory of that in his wants, I'm going to try to help him make out with someone else. So Cassandra's going to work. Carpool has picked her up. She works as a scientist, which is very interesting because her dad is actually a retired math scientist. But he stays home during the day and also helps out with some of the chores and the activities that they have to do. While Alexander goes to school, he's enrolled in private school. Uh, which is a little bit different than the public school system they have in The Sims 1. It's the same bus um, for both, but the private school kids wear a uniform. Public school kids do not. And they also have to go through the headmaster process to get into private school, where public school is just the default. So while Cassandra and Alexander are away doing their school and work, Don's going to get ready to go out on the town. Um, so this house is a three-story house, which is a little bit different than the two-story house that we have in The Sims 1. Um, the first story, as you saw, was a kitchen, living room, uh, dining room. Second story is a master bedroom, two smaller bedrooms, two bathrooms. The third story just has a painting uh, easel on there, and then you can go to the roof and there is a telescope. Which, again, a part of The Sims 2 lore is that Bella was abducted by aliens while looking through the telescope and that's how she landed up in strangerville but you know i haven't gotten into that in this game i'm gonna go ahead and have him go on a date with dina caliente um they already had a pretty good relationship they just haven't had a chance to explore that further so in the sims 2 versus the sims 3 and 4 um, you have to pick exactly where you want to go and know the name of it before you get there. So in The Sims 3, it was open world, so you could walk around and, you know, open up maps and just pick where you want to go. And in The Sims 4, you can open up the world's option, pick what world you want to go to, and then pick what lot you want to go to from there. I also forget that The Sims 2, just like The Sims 1, they only have wall phones. If you have The Sims 2 Expansion University Life, you can buy a cell phone from some of the, the stores will have like a machine for them. Um, but cell phones aren't the default. So if you want to go out, go we'll get, you know, hang out, have a date, have a phone call, you have to call on a house line. So that can be problematic when you're cheating like Don <laughs> to be making calls on a house line. So Don is able to fulfill his, his wish of having made out with three people. Um, I believe Dina is going to be the last one, I think, just based on what his memory showed. So in the upper right corner, you see the date system. It can go from as great as a, as a dream date to as bad as a horrible date. Um, you can see that little arrow next to Dina. She's a fortune aspiration, and it'll show her top four wants, and I think one of her fears. So you can kind of play the date by what Don wants, or you can play the date by what she wants. Um, and you'll be able to see her wants in game. Don wanted to eat out with her, so we're gonna get a quick bite to eat here. Um, she wants some sort of a soup. Um, and all their topics are gonna be based on their likes and dislikes, their fears, and their personalities. So as you saw, Don talked about Wu Wu. He's a romance sim that kind of seems on par 
with what he would want. And then they have other wants, like the movies. And we did show Chef's Choice, but above their heads, it gave you the idea of what they had the taste for, so you could order specifically. We can just let the Chef's Choice order. I don't think it makes a difference in terms of the date. As you continue to have good interactions and have fun together, you get little progress points towards the dream date, which is where we are. And the time also extends. So as you go up from good, great to dream, you get, I think it's another two hours. I'll add it onto the timer. Um, so while they're sitting, there are certain interactions you can do in the chair, like feeding a bite to each other, stealing a bite, caressing hands, holding hands. You can do a lot sitting down, uh, which is nice during the meal. Besides them just talking, which seems to build a lot of you know rapport between the two of them. In the lower right corner, you can see the camera. It's focused on the gypsy. She's the matchmaker, which I think is also specific to The Sims 2. Sometimes she appears on random lots, or you can call her from the phone under services, and she'll be able to come and help you find someone that likes and matches your likes and dislikes, which is also unique to The Sims 2. So now that they've finished a completely wonderful meal, I'm going to go ahead and have on pay because there is an option to skip out on the meal. I don't prefer that option only because I want them to stay on the lot. So I feel like if you skip out on the meal, there's a chance that you would be kicked off of the lot or that the people, the service people who work on the lot may start harassing you and coming after you. So I'm not going to have them skip out. I'll have them pay. Not a big deal. He didn't finish his burger, but his hunger is pretty good, so I'm not going to worry about it. So in The Sims 2, there's a photo booth, which is also, if you see, I've zoomed in there, looks pretty like a realistic photo booth. Um, so he's going to hop in there and then ask Dina to join. So there's a couple of interactions that you can actually pick in the photo booth. Um, you can take pictures, and there's different kinds. There's normal, romantic, funny, or you can woohoo if you're in the booth with someone you have a high enough romance with. Because it's a public lot, other Sims seem to be really attracted to the sound of them woohooing, which is a little bit awkward. Um, and then, as you see, Don doesn't care. He's like, oh, we have an audience. And then that changes some of his wants. So he went from just wanting to woohoo with Dina to now he wants to have five woohoos and three public woohoos. And he also wants to make out and have a dream date with her. So the make out's probably the easiest one <laughs> out of all those other ones because, unfortunately, Dina's the only one here to do any of this with. Um... Just to be mindful of doing too much romance on a public lot, because there are characters in The Sims 2, like Mrs. Crumplebottom, who will come after you for that. Now, most people, even if they do know Don is married, won't really react to that. Um, people are not as aware of relationships in The Sims 2. So, like, you see Mary Sue Pleasant, who's in the tan pantsuit, is walking over. She's actually friends with Cassandra Gong. And I'm sure she's aware that Cassandra's married to Gong, but she doesn't really react to that. I had the move again because it was a whim that came up for him. Now, again, Mary Sue comes over and she's disgusted, but she's still not really saying much of anything about it. Now, this is Mrs. Crumplebottom. She's just beating him up with her purse for woohooing or doing anything romantic on a public lot. You're not supposed to. She's like the social police of, of romantic interactions. And as you see with Mary Sue, even though he just greets her after knowing that he slept with Dina, that's not his wife, nothing happens. Mary Sue's just like, hey, how you doing? How's it going? You know, it's not a big deal to her, and there's no really reputation system. So let me know what you think of this clip. I have a part two coming soon. Like and subscribe, or let me know in the comments what you think.